Patrick Nader, Mario, myself, Ivy, and um, Sandy is absent. Thank you. Everything that's right. Neither. Neither to me. <laughs> um, I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda. Okay, Mr. Gutierrez, I'll make a motion. A second there. Yeah. Yeah. I need a second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 One absent. Student? Aye. Oh, and student. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, student report. Hi. <coughs> Hello. Today? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you interrupting like that? <coughs> yeah, but there was a pause. That wasn't like a high pause. <laughs> okay, let me start. Hello. Today, the seniors took their group photo. Go 1-8. Um, okay. Welding classes are starting up again, so if you want to sign up, talk to Mr. Riley. And if you've been in the College Center, all the desks are from a welding class, so you know, learn a new word. And then bar Varsity Girls Soccer won yesterday against Bishop. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> spring College classes uh, are starting in February, so I mean, if you guys want to... We start that college, you know. <laughs> um, winter drumline is beginning also. And RHS is traveling to Peru in June. There's still time to sign up. Come climb Machu Picchu with Miss Ma. Uh -huh. And can't wait for spring break. <laughs> Business services uh, is kind of a brief overview of what we do exactly. Um, four people in the office, me, uh, Cammy Davis, the accountant, Talia Bishop, who does all of our purchasing and uh, payments, and Robert Irving, who does our payroll. So our first semester payroll, uh, this is what we, every month, this is your regular salary. Uh, the blue line is 16, 17. The red line is this fiscal year. So you, you see we've grown uh, considerably. Uh, and that's just through all of the hiring of new teachers. Um, there's a 11% increase in payroll from last year. So in addition to the regular salary that Robert does for 570 employees, he also does a mid-month, which covers everything that's not regular. Extra stipend, overtime, things like that. Um, as you see, 16, 17, kind of, they were kind of trending together, and it shot up a little at the near the end of the year. Um, again, pay out of 69,000 a year long stipends, so any kind of stipend, coaching stipend, thing, you name it, that's not part of your regular salary. It goes in the mid month. And that usually is about 120 to 200 people, depending on how much activity we have. So we have one person doing the payroll of around 700 employees. Uh, this is a look at the absences that we keep track of. Uh, we were able to do this because we incorporated a new software called Frontline. So <coughs> this is employee absences that we track. As you'll see, Monday to Monday through Friday, it kind of grows near Friday. Um, Monday, people have the Monday blues. 
uh, it's really good data for us to know um, where, what, how we can improve on absences. Um, and of course, every absence, especially in a classroom, requires a substitute. Uh, we try to get by and classify, but also we have substitutes as everywhere we have, everywhere we can. If uh, as a custodian, um, campus safety officer, you name it, we try to have so. Next slide. Uh, so this is the number of actual days. So someone might miss half a day, someone might miss a quarter day, but that's the actual number of days. <coughs> so sick leave is 1,200 for the first semester. Uh, the, the red part is personal necessity, vacation, and unpaid. People actually do take unpaid days. I don't know how they do it, but <coughs> they manage. Uh, again, this is possible because of our frontline software. In the past, we didn't have this information. But now that we do, uh, we're better able to plan around it. So, Cami Davis, our accountant, she keeps track of our ADA. That's how we're paid. So, every day, average daily attendance. So, the state pays us based on average of attendance, not if a student is enrolled, how many times, how many days they attend. Uh, you see our last year's number, 3,198. And believe it or not, that 0.7 does make thousands of dollars in difference. So this year, we're looking at 3,353.36. And this will be revised. Um, ADA is this thing where we have 180 instructional days. We're allowed to select X number of days and have that towards our ADA. Um, it's up by 154 students. As you see, we've grown by 500 students, 500 students, but our ADA hasn't grown at, in line with that, and that's something we need to address. Accounts payable, purchasing, this is Talia Bishop. She does all of our purchase order, pay vouchers. She does the accruals for the year end. She does reimbursements, and she re retains all of the documents that we have for seven years. So we have a lot of boxes in there. Other, uh, other duties, we have ASB oversight. So the ASBs at the high school and TMS, uh, uh, we have oversight over their bank accounts. Bank account reconciliations, our office has bank accounts with the, uh, with the county. We have to reconcile those. Um, and there's countless reports. I, I wanted to list them all, but there's too many to list. Um, it takes up a lot of our time. Right? The state loves reports. <laughs> And just an overview of who, who's in our office. Cammy Davis, our accountant, um, Talia Bishop, Robert, and I. Uh, we've all been in the business department in some other district or another, and we have a great team. Uh, Talia's been here longer than all of us. Uh, Robert came from Muroc, Cammy came from Tehachapi. Uh, we work well together, and I think we really uh, we try to make things as efficient as possible, and we're always working on uh, trying to make it better. Any questions? Thank you. Can you talk prep? Sure. That'll be very long. So we started the Southern Current Prep Academy this year. Uh, it's a K through 12. Pretty much all of our students are high school students. We have middle <coughs> school students. Uh, Mrs. Galindo is here. She's part of the Southern Prep Academy along with the college, uh, getting the kids at the college. So it's great to having her there because even though we don't require kids to take college classes at the sub at um, SKPA, we we encourage it. So we don't have very many students yet, uh, but right now we're we're working to, to have that grow. I worked at a charter school before where I had seven. Within a couple years, we're at 140. So things will grow over time. Um, it just takes some time. But it's a good program. And so uh, we use the APEX uh, <coughs> online learning program. Um, and um, so it's an advanced program at A through G. Uh, college uh, is a preferred case for college in the workplace. Same program they use at the academy at the high school. Uh, it's challenging. What's good about this program, this independent study program, as opposed to 
other independent study programs, it's more of a hybrid, which is really good. Uh, we have, instead of just coming once a week, uh, kids can come uh, multiple times. We also have a paraeducator, um, as you see in some of the pictures, to, uh, to offer additional help, which has been really good. So kids come more frequently, they get more help, uh, it's more challenging, so that's, that's an option. Right now, I think we have three students who are taking um, college classes also, a couple from AD and one from Syracuse. I think one of the great things about this program, as all the different programs in the district, so we have like the Ascent Academy and others, it's a special niche. Uh, it may not be for everybody, but if you look back in time, you know, years ago, they didn't have programs like this, they didn't have options like this. So this is a great option for kids. Independent study program that's for advanced students. And so I'm glad that it's here. We've also, at the SKPA, we've had the opportunity for kids to promote. We had an eighth grader who promoted to the ninth grade at the second semester, an early graduate in December, and three promoted from 11th to 12th grade. And this is good because it's not, they're not doing easy work to promote. They're doing challenging work to promote. So they're proving um, the, that they can be successful. So, it's a nice environment. The teacher we have there, she's excellent. Uh, she had previously worked at uh, another charter school, OFL. She does really well with the students. Uh, so it's, it's been a great program so far. And I just look forward to it growing. Hopefully we can get it up to in the 20s, 25 or so at the end of the school year. So, any questions? Yeah, can you go over, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, you said? They promote stuff. Do they graduate with uh, RHS? Right now, yes, they do. Oh, yes, they do. What's the enrollment? Right now, um, it's we're at 16. I'm looking at two more, so we're almost at 18. Can you go over, um, just give an example of a parent comes in with their student mm -hmm. and then you're designing their program of learning? When, when parents come in, meet with the teacher, administrator, and we actually use what's called an individual learning plan. We go over that with students, set goals, <coughs> and uh, kind of have a specific uh, design of what's going to happen, what, their, what classes they'll be put in, look at their whole kind of four-year plan, and um, so the parent knows, knows what's going on. Give an idea of what the program's about, and, uh, and, I'll, what, and also set up the time that they'll come in. Uh, they may they could come in one day a week, but it's really set up to come more days. Uh, some kids may only need one day, but generally the teacher shall start them out with more days. And if they're being successful, they may not need to come as many days, let's say three days. Kids also come back and also work with the, the paraeducator that we have to get additional tutoring help, which is important uh, because some of the work in there, particularly the math, can be challenging. So, any other questions? Now, are these kids that uh, normally wouldn't be in our school? No, no, they would. I think it just op offers another option because, I mean, one thing that happens with something like this, if you have a, per a kid who may have an illness, this is a great option. Not that we have somebody in there with an illness, but say they have, the, you know, they already in school all the time, but they're a really good student. We have another option besides what we have, Abraham Lincoln, which is great, but for a student who wants to keep going and get prepared to go to college, a little, little better of an option, I think. And that's why we, that's why we have it. So it's a variety of things. What I think is really good about it is I look at it a little bit more than independent study. I think it's a little more of a hybrid. It's that option of coming a little more frequently, a little bit more support. Yeah. So you're not left there the whole week. You can come a little bit and get um, the help you need. Because sometimes once a week, not really enough, but uh, the multiple times, it really does offer, I think, what the kids need. Where's your location? It's right across, <coughs> if you go where the high school is, mm -hmm. it's right across from the college the college classes. There's a college center. Oh, okay. It's there. You step out. It's, what room is that? 804. Could this possibly be done down at the middle school level? <coughs> we have middle school students. <coughs> yeah, yeah, we do, we do have middle school. It's a K okay. through 12. Yeah. The other is, uh, we do have two middle school students so far. Else? All right, thank you. Next, we have Ed Services. So, in Ed Services,
services, we have taken on a few new programs this year with um, our online enrollment as well as um, we have a district-wide attendance coordinator. So just to give a little information on our online enrollment, um, we have um, Anna Arias is our enrollment person, um, so she greets everybody as they come in. Um, she's very friendly, um, really is, uh, she's bilingual, she's able to help people as they come in. And um, so just a little information on our online enrollment. So for 2017-18, um, it just shows the number of students that are enrolled per school site. So we definitely, our influx has been K-5, especially at our kindergarten. Um, age group, we have had a lot of those, um, especially going to Rosemont Elementary. <coughs> we have seven classes in there. Um, so those are the number of students that we have that have come through our doors and have enrolled. You can see that in March, um, when we started enrolling for 17-18, started off a little slow. We had one. April was, we had 90. May, we had 70. Um, June, 67. July. July and August were our busy times. We had 205 in July and 252 in August. September 61, October 60, November 33, December 16, and already in January we have enrolled with 23 students. So, so yes, so they, they, they keep on coming. We have lost um, some families, you know, over um, the Christmas break, you know, moving to different areas, but um, every day we seem to have more people that are coming coming into Rosemont. So, um, so yeah. Actually coming here, that's amazing. I must be doing something right. <coughs> yeah. Anyway, I'd like to welcome everybody back. And uh, <coughs> I was surprised in the paper, which I don't have now, uh, disappeared uh, a couple weeks ago where I saw the boys and girls soccer teams were right on the front page of the sports section. We haven't had that in a long time. So and I believe the ladies won yesterday too to nothing. And because you didn't mention the, the guys, oh never mind. Um <coughs> anyway, um but uh, everybody's doing well, and I'm glad that you know working hard, and and uh, and I'm glad everybody's back, and we're getting ready for you know before you know it, it'll be time to graduate, and we you know it will be you know, and and uh, my friend Jennifer will be retiring. Oh wait a minute, that's not right. no, no, I keep saying that. <coughs> Mr. Paulman will go to his retirement. Okay. But, uh, no. He's first. He's first. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just get that right. that sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let Mrs. Paulman do Um. Thank you. I uh, just want to welcome everybody back. Uh, everybody hit the road running because it is just looking at the numbers. You guys are going to be busy. I don't have to worry about that. I'll just sit up here and say thank you <laughs> because you guys are the ones doing all the work. And no, Mr. Corby, you're not retired yet. So. No? Besides, you'd get bored of all the boys. Nope. <laughs> Your wife would find stuff for you to do, right? I have fun doing it with that job. That's it. Um, thanks. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations, Dr. Girl. Sorry, I couldn't do that. Um, we have nothing else. Um, that's it. And then I just want to say thank you and welcome back, everyone. And another fantastic year, so, um, and that's about it too here. <laughs> okay, let's have um, our TA report. <coughs> so, way back in the summer, uh, worked to write some uh, contract language to propose to the district to uh, just clarify some of the language that we um, did back in 16-17, uh, submitted that uh, this fall. District took that, analyzed it, uh, put together a response for us, and then I finally found time to get out of the classroom, uh, yanked myself out of the classroom 
to meet with Mr. Weinstein today. Um, great meeting. It went very easily, very quickly. So uh, we put together, like I said, just some clarifications of language. 90% of it's done. Just got to uh, uh, just change a couple of things. And we should have something for the board to take a look at within the next 30 days. Get it to the membership uh, on a vote for approval. Of course, it doesn't have anything to do with salary and benefits because that goes through the end of next year. We're all set there. But just some clarifications on what we pretty much already do. Um, so that was uh, what we got accomplished today. Um, we have talked a little bit about uh, the calendar for next year. So, of course, that will be one of the new items coming up uh, that try to uh, just get buttoned down so that the board can vote on that sometime uh, before too late in the spring. So that's about it. Thank you. Um, I want to welcome everybody back and also mention that we started um, this semester a full day pre-K program that seems to be going very well. I was happy to hear the report of that always worry about the little ones making it through an extended day since we only in the previous had two half day programs um, either morning program or afternoon it seems to be very well receptive um, and doing really well uh, we are a lot of great things moving forward and, and um, just uh, happy that everybody's back and I'm sure even the teachers I are looking forward to the spring break so <laughs> <laughs> motion that we accept the items as written. Second. Second by Otis. Ron Baker. Aye. I'm on the pay vote. On the next thing? Yes. Anyone else? Any personnel? The motion to approve all personnel. Second by Perfect. Mr. All in favor? Aye. 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 Business and operations. So a new law passed and is effective on uh, January 1st. This has to do with our relationship with our union partners and what it basically AB 119 does is give access uh, additional access and in writing uh, what type of access for um, the unions to meet with new employees to explain benefits and, and to explain the, their role as union partners um, before uh, we always, that was always done but it was never really a formalized individual one-on-one -on -one time set aside for a union representative to meet with the individual whether it be in a group like all the classified employees or all the RTA employees um, so what 119 uh, does is it outlines by law what type of access is given as well as um, when an employee um, is hired, what paperwork the uh, Human Resources Department is responsible for um, giving to the employee. Uh, we, this is a MOU or a Memorandum of Understanding between uh, ourselves and the CSEA union partners. We're working on the same language, obviously, with the RTA. We're basically, it allows um, for that meeting, and this is the agreed upon MOU that will be added to the CSEA contract to comply with law AB 119. Do you have a motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Gutierrez, second. A second. All in favor? Curriculum and instructions. Ms. Vargas? Um, so our quarterly report, we do not have any complaints. Okay. <coughs> no complaints. Just information. <coughs> Just information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, motion to um, table the approval Approved single single school plan for Railroad High School. Uh, and uh, yeah, one table. Yeah, I think we should do all of them. 
Abraham Lincoln Independent Study School and Roseman High School. What's the reason? The reason is there was some corrections that needed to be done. Oh. Uh, second. Okay. We got to do each one. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Would they be um, Railroad High School? Table. Table. Yeah, Brian, Mr. Gutierrez. Like that, so second by. A second. <clears throat> Okay, the um, single school plan for Abraham Lincoln. Same reason. Okay, table. The terrace. Second by. Seven. And uh, the school plan for Roseman High School. Same? Yes, sir. The terrace. Same. Aye. The German. Motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> you gotta speak up. Yeah. Now she's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I second. I think it was a first Tuesdays. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for coming.